In this video we're going to look at an overview of the CASA XPS data system. The main window of CASA XPS is a multiple document interface and this is meaning that you may open more than one file at a time and display these files in different windows that are displayed within CASA XPS. On the Windows menu it's possible to tile these open files so you can see in this case an open VAMAS file that is empty and three that have data within. So if I select a particular window, say this one, and double click on the header bar then the full display is used for the one data file although all of these files are still open and active. If I do control tab I can cycle through the open files and even the empty file. A new file can be added to the list of open files by using the open toolbar button or on the file menu there's the open option and then we can select a file from the current directory and press open. Then a new file is opened into a, a new window and this window is added to the list of open windows so we can see now that we've got the original ones that were previously open plus the one that I've just opened here. We could also cascade these windows so that we can see a stack of the open windows and then control tab will then cycle through these open windows once again. The basis for performing any operations in CASA XPS is the experiment frame which displays the VAMAS blocks that are within the original VAMAS file and these are arranged logically in the right hand pane so that you can select and display data in the left hand side which then becomes the target for a whole range of operations that are associated with these toolbars. For example there's a toolbar button that changes the range used to display these data. If I select this button and keep clicking you can see that the range changes and it acts on the active tile. And The reason that I'm referring to this as the active tile is because you can have more than one tile displayed in the left hand side and this occurs when you have a scroll list so I have now two potential tiles that could be active tiles or alternatively I can display both of these at the same time by altering the page tile format and this dialog window allows me to make various arrangements of regular displays of these tiles so I'm, I've currently got two and if I press OK then you can now see that the scroll list has gone away because both of the display tiles fit into the one page and the bar that appears above this carbon 1S indicates that this one is the active tile. If I click within the oxygen spectrum then the display changes to indicate that the active tile is now the oxygen 1S so now when I do the same operation of changing the scale it's acting on this display tile but not on the Carbon 1S display tile. So I need to give focus to the Carbon 1S and then the same button will allow me to change the range of the binding energies for the Carbon 2. The relationship of the active tile to toolbar buttons is extended when we look at the various dialog windows that are associated with processing of these data. So for example, we have a button here on the toolbar that invokes a dialog window that is going to act on the active tile only. And so if I wanted to change the display from binding energy to kinetic energy, I've invoked this dialog window with the carbon OS as the active tile. So when I press apply, we can see that the binding energy here will change to kinetic energy whereas the binding energy remains the same for the oxygen 1S. That's because this tile is not active and the dialog window only acts on the active tile. Let me return that to binding energy. There are other dialog windows that allow you to process data such as these carbon 1S. We could create regions and components, in other words a peak model for the data that is in the active tile. So if I display these data and it's the active tile, when I press create then we have 
a region defined now on the data in the active tile. If I wish to create a region for the Oxygen 1S, I need to give focus to the Oxygen 1S. You can see here that it's indicating that the dialog window is now acting on the Oxygen 1S PE20, parser G20. So when I say create, again, the result is a background and a quantification region that is applied to the Oxygen 1S. So if I click the Carbon 1S, you can see that it, it now has altered to indicate that the dialog window is now going to process data that's in the Carbon 1S rather than the Oxygen. And the same will apply for the components, that because I'm still looking at the Carbon 1S, when I press Create, a component is added to these data. And each time I'll create three here and press Fit. So I've just created a rudimentary peak model for these data in the Carbon 1S, but when I go to the Oxygen 1S, there are no components because it now is looking at the Oxygen 1S rather than the Carbon 1S. So pressing Create here, and fit will have the consequence of putting a peak on the oxygen 1s and clicking in the carbon 1s we now see the carbon components there are a number of dialog windows that work in the same way as this quantification and parameters dialog window as to say that they each have sets of property pages that perform different functions so we have regions components and reporting is performed on the report spec page and the same pattern exists for the spectrum processing, where you have the processing history indicating what has been performed on these data, and currently there are no processing operations. And if you apply some type of processing, such as smoothing, then the smoothing operation will apply to the carbon 1S because it is in the active tile. If I click on the oxygen 1S, when I press apply, the smoothing operation is now performed on the oxygen 1S. And we can see that if we look at the processing history, they both have the smoothing instruction. So if I remove the smoothing instruction from the 1, that is to say the carbon 1S, and go to the oxygen, you can see the smoothing instruction is still on the oxygen. I only remove the history from the carbon 1S previously, and I can do the same for the oxygen. Another dialog window that resembles the spectrum processing is the annotation dialog window. It too has a set of property pages and an annotation history corresponding to the processing history. And the idea is that each one of these property pages provides you a different type of annotation table or text. And for the active tile, when we press apply, a table will be applied to the data in question. So if we tick various boxes here, we're going to exclude area, exclude percent area, I think we'll keep that, exclude the position, forward half maximum, and we'll include the relative sensitivity factor for these peaks. And when I press apply, we end up with a table that is displayed on the annotation history property page. I can adjust the annotation using a box that appears when the annotation history is topmost on the annotation dialog window and then simply pointing at the center of the box and dragging and then releasing with the left mouse I move the annotation table to a new position. So if I want to delete this you make a selection and then on the annotation history there's a delete button. You can also adjust things such as the font and whether it's position relative to the display or the data and these are all adjusted on the annotation history. I'll just delete the table to illustrate how the annotation history is used to adjust the annotation content of a VAMAS block. The last of these buttons in the, this grouping is the element library. And the element library represents a set of property pages and the first one is the element table. This is a list of elements and transitions. And then you, you have the periodic table. So let me display a survey spectrum. And we'll return the display to a single tile per page. So we can see more of the survey data. And by indicating a position on a spectrum where we see a peak, 
then the element table scrolls and the transition that is most likely to be this peak here out of the ones that I see is the oxygen 1s and when I click on the oxygen 1s on the element table then a set of markers are put over the data that show where other oxygen transitions ought to be so we can now see that not only is the oxygen 1s matching but there's an oxygen OJ and potentially other oxygen peaks up here so there's an oxygen 2s so by selecting an element from the element table we're able to see whether the photo emission lines match that particular element and we can also see on the periodic table that the oxygen has been indicated and that's because we made this selection on the element table and if we wanted to from the periodic table we could investigate whether we've got carbon and the markers are again added to the display so we can see that carbon is a likely candidate do we have any nitrogen well we don't see any evidence of nitrogen so we can remove that and ultimately we end up with a set of markers that match all of the photo emission peaks and that is our indication that these are the elements that we have in our sample these other toolbar buttons that are on the top toolbar are related to propagating information between VAMAS files and VAMAS blocks. It's also a button that allows you to copy and another one to delete. But these are, are really the domain of another video that is focused on how to propagate peak fits and processing between VAMAS blocks. Then we have the print toolbar button that allows you to print the left hand display to a printer and you've got a print preview button that allows you to see what will be printed when the print button is pressed and on the top toolbar we have the about dialog of CAS XBS and this tells you the version number of CAS XBS and it also provides you fields to allow the updating or the entry of the username license string that enables full functionality of CAS XPS. At the other end of the toolbar there are a set of buttons that relate to creating an empty experiment frame and let me just delete these from the screen these are all the dialog windows and an empty experiment frame simply displays some images that have been saved within the configuration files of CAS XPS so right now we're just displaying that there's a short course at occasion 19 and I've also got an example of a peak fit that comes up as a message. Now these can all be adjusted within the CASA XPS directory so you could have your own images should you wish. If I want to open a file as we've already seen there's the open toolbar button that produces the open dialog window and there's also the convert and the convert dialog window will allow you to convert a range of different formats some of which are listed here such as multi-pack files and these can be selected and a new VAMAS file will be written back to the directory that contains the original SPE file for example there's a save button and then there are a set of buttons that are related to how to take images of data within CAS XPS. So this image here was created by preparing a display and then adding it to the clipboard before pasting it. Let me just go back to a file that contains some information. Do a different one, the one that has the peak models. So if I wanted to, for example, take this peak model and place it on the clipboard I could use this copy button or I could use one of these buttons here and these buttons will add enhanced meta files to the clipboard and these are vector drawing graphics instructions that will be interpreted by software such as Word or Excel the copy button will take a bitmap so you can choose a bitmap and the size of the bitmap is either determined by the displayed area you see here or you can choose to enter a value that will be the size of the bitmap that is created when the button is pressed in this case I'll use the display size and let's use page 
paint as the means of displaying the bitmap. So there you see a bitmap that has gone through the clipboard and is now being displayed in paint. An alternative mechanism for transferring a peak model out of CASO XPS is to use the clipboard to save numerical values for these component peaks, the spectra and the background and this is performed using toolbar buttons. This one in particular will just take the data that is within the active tile. There are other buttons that will extract information from the selected VAMAS blocks over here but the same principle applies, the difference being that with this button the data goes onto the clipboard, with these other buttons they are saved as files but the essential format for the data is identical. So if we press this button you see a clipboard selection dialog window and this displays various columns of ASCII numerical values that correspond to this peak model. So if we copy all of these and paste into Excel you see that you get a range of columns of information and these correspond to the kinetic energy for the spectrum, the binding energy for the spectrum, the counts per second for the intensities within the spectrum, then each of the three component peaks, and these are in counts per second, the background, the envelope, that's the synthetic envelope that is constructed by summing these component peaks, then the normalized residual and the standard residual. These can then be used to plot the data and this is just an example of a scatter plot within Excel where each of these columns have been selected before displaying as a reverse plot.